Hey, hello, and welcome back to Good Knit Kisses. I'm your host, Kristen, and today we are working on our live broadcast Q&A for the Rwanda that I'm wearing right now. Wow, this is bright. Oh my gosh, see my neck there. <laughs> How are you doing? Get your coffee, get your tea, and come along with me while we stitch our love and love our stitches. How are you this morning, everyone? Welcome to the replay if you're joining us there and you can of course watch all the way through and enjoy yourself. We also will have links below to all the burning questions that you have and the comments should show up in order if they have a red dot on them there from a live commenter. If you would like to join us live, we come on every Monday at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time and uh, I'm in Texas. Yeehaw! <laughs> so that's when I come on. However, I will tell everyone as they jump on and the replay viewers next week is spring break for my family and so I will not be on next week as an exception <laughs> like a holiday for us I'll have the kids and we'll be doing our thing so uh, we'll be gone next week um, I'll try to throw a little reminder um, thing up there and uh, and let everyone know but uh, yeah <laughs> sometimes I pop on randomly when I'm uh, having the spring break vacation but I just thought I'd let y'all know a little heads up Thank you for joining me and hopping on. I love when you tell me um, that you're here and where you're from. It's so fun. Even after the fact, I get uh, people pop up and like, hey, I'm from Denmark. Hey, I'm from Dubai. And I'm like, what? That's awesome. <laughs> or Michigan. Hey, Michigan. You know, just everybody. Good morning, Allison. Hey, Erica and Lexi. Hi, Brandy and Allison. Yes, good morning, y'all. I love the y'all. <laughs> hey, Ron and Stephanie. I'm hoping this is Stephanie, but I, oh, hey, it could be Ron. It could be both. That would be amazing if you're having your morning coffee with me. <laughs> I know I come on when a lot of people are working, but this is sort of working for me, but it's not really working, right? It's play. I mean, I get to play with yarn for a living, so that's pretty awesome. Yay. That is a blessing from the Lord, I just have to say. <laughs> That truly is. Hey, Southwestern Michigan. Hey, Allison. And I, props to Michigan. <laughs> I had a really great coworker from Michigan one year. Um, well, for a few years at this, um, the interior, de interior design job that I had. Uh, she was awesome. Nancy, love her, miss her. <laughs> hey, Joanne, I see you jumping on. She jumped on a few minutes late, y'all. She's late to work. <laughs> go play with some yarn. You're in trouble. Go go untangle some yarn. <laughs> That's your punishment for being late to work. <laughs> what do y'all think of that punishment? By the way, little tip while you're jumping on. You know the best way to untangle yarn? A loom pick. If you only crochet or knit with needles, first of all, you're missing out on loom knitting. But second of all, get yourself a pick, uh, a loom knit pick. It, anyone will do. It's a nice, sharp little point. And you, if you stick that sucker in a knot and kind of wiggle on it, it helps unknot it. So, <laughs> naughty yarn need loves too, needs love too. <laughs> Naughty yarn needs love to bump, bump, bump. Y'all remember that song? <laughs> 80s. I'm having a weird morning. Sorry. <laughs> hey, Babette. And she is from Missouri. Oh, hello, Babette. You just wa usually watch the replay. I'm so glad that you're on live. Hi, Paulette. And you're in Winnipeg, Canada. Awesome. Had my first trip to Canada over this summer. Hi, Wanda. And Lori is in Washington State. Well, hello. That is such a beautiful place. Got to go up there when my brother was training in the military. Um, Niagara Falls, Canada. Coral, I was in your backyard this summer. And I have to say, the falls are better on the Canada side. <laughs> and at night. I went at night. It was awesome. It was midnight. <laughs> a little true, yeah, as y'all are popping on. I'm waiting for everybody to jump on that we're going to go over everything. Alicia, Good morning. Good morning, Debbie. <laughs> Joanne, haha, <laughs> you caught me. The extra cup of coffee is worth my punishment. I'm trying to say it how I think Joanne would say it. <laughs> so I'm having a little tummy ache in this morning. So I did something a little unconventional. I I popped in a little bit of a um a peppermint oil drop. 
hoping my tummy will feel a little bit better. Mm. Hey, Joan. And she's in Massachusetts. Woohoo! <laughs> Angela's in New Jersey, New Jersey. Edentown. Welcome. Hey, Allison. Ah, she agrees. Yes, it is. And I have to say that you have, uh, have me always talking to you on GKK saying in a good way, you're so bad. <laughs> and then I laugh. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, y'all just talk right back to me. Just answer. Make your family think you're crazy. They'll stay out of your yarn stash. That's a good thing, right? Maybe maybe your kitty cats or dogs will stay away too. <laughs> no hair in the yarn. <laughs> Oh, and from Sweden. I'm so glad you're here today. I'm so glad all of y'all are here today. I just think it's fun that that's Sweden. Sweden, I've, I've always wanted to go. Alicia says, I like to get mess out of yarn. You know, I know it sounds funny, but sometimes I do like to untangle me a little bit of yarn. And if I'm at a knit night or something, I see a friend with it. I'm in there. I'm that friend. I'm, I'm jumping in. I'm helping you with that knot. I'm like, Let, let's get in that. Let's do that. Because I want you to get done with that so you can move on to more pleasurable things. You know what? Let's do this. This week, this month, if you see a friend in yarny tangle trouble, get at your loom pig and help a sister out or a brother out. <laughs> You're from New Jersey too. Hey, Debbie. Good morning, Elizabeth. Oh, and it's snowy in Long Island, New York. And you thought you were through this. I know it. That gopher, I mean, that uh, groundhog should have come out, huh? Hey, Joy and Robin. Hey, hey. Dawn says, ginger tea for tummy aches. I know, I didn't have any ginger tea. I don't have any fresh ginger right now. And that was, this was quicker. Man, my ears are popping. Um, mm, it's weird. Your dog thinks he's a cat. <laughs> There is a song and a children's um, video. I know it's really odd. It's odd that I'm saying this. Um, it's a doggish kind of cat. Um, it's from a bar. I, I, I'm not really a huge fan of the Barbie movies for kids, like the little CGI thing. But actually, they got this one pretty, pretty good. Um, it's the um, the um, the Princess and the Popper. And, um, anyway, but this one girl has a doggish kind of cat and it's a cute little song. So I bet, I bet it's on YouTube somewhere. You'll probably get a kick out of that, uh, Dawn. Susan, good morning. Winter storm warning today. Good <laughs> playing with yarn. Hey, Brenda. <laughs> All right. That was my last girl. Okay. Y'all ready to get started? I had to drink down some of that. Um, here, one more. I had to drink down some of that peppermint for my tummy. My apologies for bodily stuff today, talking about it. Okay, so we're going to talk about this. Let me see if I can pull back here. This Rwanda sweater. Oh, y'all can see my mess. Y'all want to see? This is my messy studio. I've got all this kind of junk over here. Well, it's not junk, but oh, and I have an empty hanger. Isn't that nice? <laughs> well, that's just that's just silly. <laughs> Um, <laughs> anyway, this Rwanda sweater, if you saw it come out this weekend, um, the pattern came out on our website. So if you go, um, check it out. Um, so the pattern is free. It's up on the site and you can get the needle pattern on, um, Lion Brand Yarns. And, um, I think we need to add that link into the blog. Um, excuse me. Um, but the loom knit pattern version, this is made on the loom. You can make the exact same thing on needles. So the video that I did is on the loom. And I've had a lot of questions asking about sizing. Now, it's called one size. Like, that's the sizing. And, you know, if you're, if you're usually a medium to large, that's fine. I mean, or a small to, small to large. That usually fits that category for people, even maybe up to a 1X. But for some of us bigger girls, we get a little worried uh, because it doesn't always work out that way. <laughs> and when you can't, like, try it on, it's kind of hard to tell. Even seeing the sizing, sometimes you're like, mm, but is it for me? It is for you. I'm going to tell you a few other tweaks. I did talk about it a little bit in the video. So I want to go into just some of the quick details on sizing just according to how I did it. So first of all, 
all my comments on what I actually did fall to this category. This is a long loom. It's just like the Nifty Knitter Blue Long Loom 62 peg. Okay, now, if you, and it's 11 sixteenths. Yes, Joanne, 11 sixteenths. So, <clears throat> if you use this loom, first of all, you're gonna need to block it out because when it hits these corners, okay, these parts, it gets a little stretched out, and so you're going to need to block it. And I would say you're going to need to block it on any loom you use. That's first things first. So um, anyway, what this is, the reason why you see all these holes, like someone was like, what if I don't have the holes? And that's because you have the right size. This is a, like a Knit UK loom. Um, I Love Loom Knitting is the one who sent me this. So um, this loom is from them. It's the same as a Knit UK loom. And I'm not putting in all the pegs. Okay, so if you buy it online, that's what this is. Um, whether you get it from Knit UK, whether you get it from I Love Looming or some other distributor, that's fine. Um, I've got some links that we'll be throwing on here on how to get some. If you go to any of my Amazon links that have a good Knit Kisses written in there, it's an affiliate link and I benefit from it and it, benef it benefits Good Knit Kisses and really it benefits having Joanne on staff. So, <laughs> so if you, if you use it and buy something, we totally appreciate it. It doesn't cost you anything extra. So I just want to get that disclaimer out there and tell you that. So the other thing is I'm going to talk about these two looms because I've had people specifically ask me about sizing for these two looms. Hey, Kristen, can I make it on this, uh, this, instead of this loom, can I make it on these two looms? Um, yes, you can. And actually, um, I, now, I haven't tried this particular yarn on this loom. Um, I'm thinking that you can still use it, though. Um, my guess is um, that you're going to need, um, well, I know you're going to need more pegs. I just, I'll have to guesstimate on the amount of um, pegs for now, and I'm going to show you how to do it yourself. So we're going to flip the camera here in a minute, but this is the loom um, I'm going to talk about. But um, I would say that probably um, this one, would be um, a little step better in using the yarn that we were using. This is the Scarfy yarn. Okay, so this is the Scarfy. This is the mint silver, and you can use any of the colors, obviously, but um, the pattern was done for that. Now, for the 3X, um, I'm going to go back real quick. So the sizing stuff made it on this blue loom. The 3X is, um, what I did is the armhole, diagram shows that you're supposed to measure from the shoulder to the um to the um uh, where you're gonna seam it up for the side nine inches all i did was i added one inch that's all i did now i would also say which i did not say in the video that you're gonna need to add one more inch before the last seed stitch patterning and it actually would have helped me on coloring a little bit better and i think it would have matched up like where i seam it on the sides a little bit better so um Oh, I gotta pop my ears. Anyway, sorry, that's weird today. Um, anyway, so the side side seams probably would match a little bit better, and it would give me a little more room for my booty. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But it looked perfect on my friend Cindy. So if you haven't seen the pictures, we've got pictures on the website. My friend Cindy, she is the same size as I am, like um, 3X, but she's much shorter than I am. I'm six foot one. So it falls different on my body type versus her body type, and uh, but it still fit. Now, I did steam it, and I also want to show you this. Now, we'll give a link for this if you want it. Your steam iron will work. This is just what this is. Now, if you use something like this, I'll tell you, um, and I can do a review on this and, sh and a, a show you how to use it. But what this is, this is just a travel steamer that I got. I, I honestly got it for traveling, but also for a quick steam versus getting out my big clunky steamer. Um, it only has two parts. It's the body with the attached cord, and then you just pour your water in, and then you put this on. Okay, and then lock it, and then you just flip that, and 70 seconds later steam is coming out and then you you steam it or you steam it but you can't steam it so like you can't lay it on something and or stuff will come out which should not be good so I did steam it with this but I had to hold it and so I kind of just I put it near the fabric and I kind of just worked it out I will say that it feels really good with the um uh with it steamed 
it kind of, it blooms out um, the really pretty um, wool. This is, there's a 20% wool content in here. Um, you can still wash it, but um, anyway, the, um, uh, any of the imperfections and the tensions that when you're knitting, that helps it tremendously, but also it kind of lengthens it. So you, when you're measuring and you're doing it, you know, um, on, on the tutorial, and I'll say, hey, provisional bind off and then measure to 31 inches or to 54 inches or 50 inches or the different parts in the video, um, that's fine. I'm just saying that once you steam it, it's probably gonna lengthen. All my comments are based upon this yarn. So I cannot guarantee if you use something else that doesn't have maybe 20% wool in it, if you use something that has zero wool, it's probably not gonna stretch like that. It's probably gonna, retain about the same sizing. So, um, anyway, <laughs> um, I'm, I love the comments coming through. I'm seeing some of the, the comments come through. Um, the, uh, let me go, let me go back and start answering some of those questions and then I'll, I'll flip it. Um, I'll flip the camera here for a second. Um, okay. Thank you for the pattern. So the, the pattern to, for the Luminate Ruana pattern is in there. By the way, we did have someone ask about being in a wheelchair. Um, I didn't really comment on her thing, but I've just been thinking about it a little bit more. She was asking about, you know, wearing it. Um, it just depends on how it, um, it wears for you. Like, um, um, so, um, I'm sorry. I'm struggling how to say this. If you, if you're really, if you're really short or like your torso is really short, then yeah, you might want to, um, you might want to adapt and, um, and make it a little shorter than that. Um, so I wouldn't be able to like tell you about color pattern, uh, like, like where the color stuff is, like where to stop and then like where to knit to, but you're not actually, you know, someone asked me about some of the math on the diagram. So, um, it's not exactly folded. Um, uh, okay. Wow, I'm really having trouble saying this. So someone had written me on my YouTube channel last night and she says, I'm trying, I'm struggling with the math because if I knit to 31 inches and then I knit to 54, um, I only have 27 inches on one side and I had the 31, like what gives? Well, what that is, is it's, um, it's accommodating for your neck. And so the V where it all stitches together is down back a little further. So like right here, is where it would fall like here. So you've got to accommodate, like when you fold something in half, you can't, you can't put it right. It's not going to be right in the middle that V because your neck's there. So, <laughs> um, just keep that in mind when you're knitting. Um, for, if you're in a wheelchair, you're going to want to shorten that up maybe in the back of, so you're not sitting on it if that's what you want. Otherwise you can do it as normal. So I'm only saying that for that, but a Rwanda, just so you know, a Rwanda normally just stitches up the back and then it's open on the side. So you can take it and like, pull it over like this. I can't do that because I've got the armholes. So you would like flip it over. So if you stitch up the armholes, that's how you're making this topper version. Um, I would especially recommend this for a wheelchair because then you won't have to worry about this thing kind of falling off into a wheel or getting caught in anything. I think it would be perfect for that. So, oh, I love all the comments on it. Thank you. I'm so glad that you guys are excited about it. Okay, so the gauge for this loom here, this is what I'm holding up. This is not an all-in-one loom. This is just one, um, I know I don't even have the, 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 the um, loom all put together, but this is just one um, rail of the 28 inch knit, um, knitting board. It's 28 inch, I mean, yeah, 28 inch loom with peg extenders. That's the name of the product. And it's 11 sixteenths. So it looks kind of like the knitting board all in one loom. Now, I don't even know how many is on the rail. So I may need to like, hang on a minute for so I can count. Let's see. Um, I have one, two, So we've got um, 64. So there's 64 stitches on um, this um, this one rail. You might 
Um, you might be able to get away with doing a 63, a cast on of a 63. I'm going to go and flip the camera and I'm going to show you how you determine how many stitches to cast on no matter what loom you want to try this on. Okay, does that sound good? Hit that love button <laughs> or do an eye icon and uh, tell me if you like that. Um, so other tools of the trade, I'm just going to kind of go over a couple of tools that I use. Also, if you're, um, you want to fold it in half and kind of mark where you're, you're going to, um, sew up together. I did not talk about this in the video because I didn't want to just sit and talk about products. But one of the things you see me show in the video is this little clampy thing. We'll have to put that in the Amazon shop. I may already have that in there, but, um, I love these little guys. They have this little tooth. It reminds me of like. <laughs> little clip and it just goes into your stitch and clamps down and I can put two panels together and I love it. I'm trying to remember what these are called. <laughs> but anyway, I just keep them in one of these little things. Have y'all seen these little containers? I just keep them in here until I need them. I don't use them on every project, but it's really great when I'm seaming stuff together, sewing stuff. Oh good, the hearts are coming. Okay, so the steamer and those I use. So those are my extra tools. Now what I did is this, um, I also want to, I want to seam, I mean, I want to make my swatch on the loom that you want to use. So you get the yarn you want to use and you get the loom you want to use and you make a swatch. I know you're not going to like it, but to be accurate and it to fit, you need to do this. Please, you need to do this. Um, even if you do like a half inch cast on, that's fine. <laughs> but um, I would try doing it the right cast on. But here's the here's the important thing: when you make this, you need to steam it. You you need to steam it or block it. So if you're gonna wet block it, you know, wash it and then kind of gently squeeze out the water and then pin it with like rust free pins and let it sit there and dry. Then do your measurement. So I want to emphasize that first before I get to anything. Okay. That's very important on sizing. So then we're going to measure this and then you can do all the, the things and I'll show you the calculator to do it. So I'm going to flip over and show y'all. Sorry, I'm getting my desk ready. <laughs> um, oops, Siri turned on. <laughs> Hold on, let me scroll through, make sure I'm, I'm not missing any questions real quick before I, oh yeah, you didn't know I was that tall. <laughs> You're six foot as well, Brenda. Hey, to the six foot girls. Um, Allison, yeah, I know how many pegs it has. I just couldn't remember how what the rail was and I have it written somewhere else. And the reason why I say 63 pegs is because you need an odd number to cast on for this. You don't need um, it even, so it's 64 but the most pegs you could do for this um, pattern is um, 63 because you actually end up increasing one stitch and then you end up having um, 64 on towards the end of it. You would have you have one extra towards the end. So whatever loom you use, if it's got an odd number and using all the pegs, you're going to have an extra peg that you're going to need to put stuff on. So you may have to like double over on a peg and that would be a little hard. Hey, Brandy. I see my friend Brandy from here. Good morning. I've been thinking about you, love. All right, so let me flip the camera. All right, I'm turn on this light. Okay, so sorry about the glare, y'all. Okay, so here is the website, and there's a link in there. Oh, sorry, my cord is all in here. Hold on. Okay, so there's the website. I want to direct your attention to... Um, to the, uh, if you go on goodknitkisses.com on the home page, I mean, this won't show up later if you're watching this replay in like in a few weeks because we'll have a few more blogs out. But right now, the home page shows this blog because that's the last blog we had. If you go down, first of all, that's the salt calculator. Keep going. This is an interactive knitting calculator. You're going to want to bookmark this. Okay, so this is where I'm going to go and I want to show you. You're going to want to scroll down here. You make a swatch, making a swatch, go down here to the cast on calculator. And this is what I'm talking about. So if you are like, math is not my friend, this will be your friend. Okay. <laughs> this is where you go to help you determine that cast on. All right. So, um, what I want to do is I'm going to show you real quick. This is in my book. I have this little page bookmarked and I do have it on one of my sites. This shows all the looms. Well, there's more looms out than, than this now, but I have this quick reference chart here. And, uh, this is talking about how, um, 
uh, <clears throat> see these different loom types? We are using an 11 sixteenths, I don't know if I can get in here and you can see it, but we're using an 11 sixteenths inch loom. Okay, that's what, uh, no, that's what this is. I said, I got my things confused. This is 7 sixteenths and this is 11 sixteenths and this one's 3 eighths. So in size, let's do it from small to large. Okay, so from left to right, this is the smaller gauge. This is, um, this is still in small gauge. So these fit the same category. Then there's a category in between here, and then there's this one, okay, for the spacing. Okay, so right now we were working with a large gauge or LG loom. It's also the same as using like um, a, anywhere from a 10 to a 13 inch knitting needle, okay? And you can even see what yarn um, works best with it, which is a, a US 5 bulky 5 or super bulky. So we're using a 5 bulky on here. Now, what we want to do is take it down to either this one or this one. So I actually go down two categories. I skip the re regular gauge altogether, which is half inch and 9 sixteenths, and I go all the way down to the um, the small gauge, which is SG, and it's 5 sixteenths looms, which there's not many of them. 3 eighths and 7 sixteenths. So that's these two right beside each other. 3 eighths and 7 sixteenths. And <clears throat> over here, when we look at um, yarn weight and stuff, if you go over one more, go all the way over here, and you can see that on an SG loom, I get four to five stitches per inch. And down here at 11 sixteenths, I'm going more at like two to three stitches per inch. So even just for a quick reference if you just want a, a guesstimate um, and you're working on a pattern and you want to figure out um, hey how many approximately am I going to need you can kind of guess um, you could take uh, the um, the stitches per inch that's lowest and say okay I'm gonna I'm on an SG loom and I have the um, I'm sorry that's low that's the highest so I have five five stitches per inch okay and um, that means you have more stitches in one inch than you do uh, down here. Okay, so that means you need more stitches to cast on, right? Casting on is just the, getting the yarn on the loom. So I'm gonna go here to five stitches per inch and I'm gonna go, okay, so five stitches per inch. And then I go to my, I'm just going to give you a quickie calculation, okay? So once you get your your, your gauge um, and you, everything, you can give it really what you put in. You're going to put in all the notes here. But I'm going to go back just for a second. This this will help you on any pattern. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to go to this um, this particular piece, this Loom Knit Rwanda um, style free spirit topper. Okay, so I'm going to go in here and I'm scrolling down and I'm looking at sizing and gauging, right? So <clears throat> the gauge says that I'm getting um, seven stitches and 11 and a half rows in two inches. Okay, so if I divide two and half, I'm getting half that. Um, I'm getting three and a half stitches per inch, okay? So see how it fell in that two to three category we talked about over here for this, this loom? So now you know what I got, and it says the size is 30, by 60. This is like the finished size. So the width is 30. And when you look and read all the notes in the pattern, you go, oh, it's two panels. So 30 inch width must be half of that. So it's 15 inches. So it's half this size. And I know this also because I go down here and I see, look, I have a diagram. Not all patterns have diagrams, but this one has one. And I see here's one panel. And there's two panels and it has a dimension line. It has the measurements and it says 30 inches. So I know that these two sections are 15 inches each. Okay. So, so far, is everybody tracking with me? Are you, are you understanding what I'm going? Give me a thumbs up. If, uh, if, if you don't understand and you have a question while we're live, you can hit that sad button or something and then, um, and then I'll know if I need to re-explain anything. But if you're liking it, give me a thumbs up or a heart or something. All right, so I need two panels, all right? So I'm taking the number 30 and I'm dividing it in half. So just a quickie with my regular old calculator. Well, this is a scientific calculator, but I, it's just a regular calculator. So you go, I say, okay, I have 15 
stitch it. I mean, I have 15 inches that I want, and I'm going to say times, I'm going to guess, if I'm going to do an SG loom, I'm going to guess that I have five stitches per inch, right? Equals 75. Okay, so that tells me right there, if I am working on the maximum amount relatively in that category, I probably need to look at 75 pegs on my loom. If I got 76, then I would just cast on like 77. Does that make sense? Um, because I need for this pattern to cast on an odd number. So I can tell just from that guesstimate that, oh, you know what, maybe this loom is gonna work better because guess what? This loom is 80 pegs. So um, the way that I would first start it is I would grab my yarn that I wanna use. I I'm using Scarfy in this instance, which is this one. I'm just pulling this right off of me, I'm wearing it. This is what we're working on, okay? So I pull that yarn and then I make a swatch. I want to make a swatch that's about four inches so I can really get a good measurement. Four to six inch. Six is better, but if I'm doing a four inch swatch, I can just measure in a two inch area in the middle. So let's just go with that number again and just guess how many stitches we should cast on for our, um, for our swatch. So if I want to do four inches, I'm going to cast on, let's just say, five. Okay, I want to do five uh, stitches per inch times four, so I'm going to cast on 20 stitches. And my um, my sample is going to be a little smaller than this. This is about, I think I measured seven or something, so it'll be about this wide, and I'll measure across two inches kind of in the middle of here. And then I'll count how many stitches in that two inch area, and then just divide that number in two. I think that's the most accurate, but instead of dividing in two, all you got to do is you make your, your, make your swatch, steam it, not with your hand behind it. Oh my gosh, no. <laughs> Put on oven mitt or um, like have it on a, have it on like a hanger, like to hang it up and then steam it or something. Um, like put in one of those like pants hangers or something. Um, I don't know. That's not always how I would do it, but this, this particular one is like more vertical. And then you would just go to, um, you can use your calculator or you can go to that calculator that, um, that I have down here, interactive knitting calculators. You scroll down to the calculator and it set, you plug in your width across that you measured, which would be two. So I'm gonna click in here, I'm gonna write two. And the number of stitches, let's say I got, um, I got 11. Okay, let's say I got 11 stitches per inch. Now project width, I need to put in 15, right? When I hit go, it automatically tells me I need 82.5. Now I'm guessing, I was guessing at like a higher number here. And so that 82.5 and is what I would need. So I would round that up to 83. Now if it said like 81.5, I would round it up to um, 83 because um, I, I needed an odd number. So um, that's, that's the max that I think it might be. So if you're working on, say, this one and it gave you that, then you could totally round it to the next corner on this piece. Um, it would be kind of cool if you could keep it under 64. But let's say, what if we got like four and a half stitches per inch? What if in a two inch area we got uh, nine? Okay, let's say you got nine and then there's that 15. I'm gonna hit go again and then it says 67.5. Okay, so if I got four and a half stitches per inch, on this one, then, um, or nine stitches and two inches on this one, then my cast on would totally work. And it's telling me that 67.5 is what I need. So yes, it rounds up to 68, but on this one, you would round it to 69. So you would need 69 pegs and it would totally work on here. And that is pure guessing. That's me just kind of giving you a guess. Now, Here's another thing uh, that I wanna talk about. So we talked about this book. This, by the way, this is my book, um, and I do have this uh, chart on my website, but if you, want, um, it, if you want a PDF version or something, it's also in the, the PDF uh, printable one you can get on Ravelry, but this is my, the hard book, so it's like an Amazon thing, and, uh, or like Barnes & Noble and all that stuff. So this little chart is what we went over, and so I'm gonna put this over here, and then um, we've, got, we've got that calculator on here. Um, what was I gonna show you? Oh, I know what I was gonna show you. Okay, so I had someone asking me about yarn changes. They said, what other Lion Brand yarn can I use 
first of all, this is the pattern on the Lion Brain Yarn site for the needle pattern. So if you see it in that color, that's what that is. And I want to go to, um, I'm just going to the regular website. I thought I had it written down. Sorry. All right. All right. So this, I'm on the Lion Brand website. Feels like butter. Ha ha. That is, that actually feels really good, by the way. I got to see that at the show. <laughs> um, it's really cool. It's like a little knit tube. A little segue. Sorry. I got a little excited. There's yarn right there. <laughs> Go to our yarns right up here. Our yarns. Click. And we're going to say shop all yarn. Okay. So then I go over to this weight category and I click on here and I'm going to go over to bulky because this is using a bulky weight yarn. So I click on bulky and now what it does is it gives me all the bulky yarns that they carry. Okay. And then I'm going to go through and look. So like the person who asked me, she says, oh, I want to know, can I use a solid uh, like, w do you recommend a solid or stripe yarn that's also a lion brand? So I was like, oh, okay. So I went and looked and I'm like, oh, well, we've got um, Lion's Pride wool spun yarn. So let me click on Lion's Pride. That's a solid. So I'm clicking on that and um, I get to see, um, you know, all the things about it. And I go, okay, that's a solid. They have a few stripes and go down here to knit gauge and I see... This is how I generically find out if I think I want to do it. I can look at all the care information. I'm like, machine wash, machine dry. That sounds good. And then I go down here and I look at knit gauge. I'm like, oh, okay. This is 13 stitches uh, and 19 rows on 10.5. Uh, and their knit gauge is four point. Uh, I mean, there's four by four. So I go, I say, okay. So this is 13 divided by four. And it's 3.25 stitches per inch. So now I kind of know what that is, what that number that is. But 13 is what they're showing with the 4x4. Four four. So let me go back and let's find the original yarn that we were looking at. Okay. So the original yarn we're looking at, I'm going to go through and I see it. It's right here. It's scarfy. So let's go look at the original yarn. So I started... I started a little weird. So normally I go and I look, investigate the, scar the yarn that it's supposed to be. So let me look at the yarn it's supposed to be. And let me scroll down here to where I get all the information. This is the yarn category, the fiber, the care, the, you know, all the information. It's a five bulky, um, especially because if you didn't know, just Google that name of that yarn. And uh, you go in here and look, it says the knit gauge is four by four and it's 14 stitches in a four by four area. Well, that four, uh, 14 stitches is 14 divided by four, whoops, I hit the minus, 14 divided by four is 3.5. So it gets 3.5 stitches per inch. So that means you need more stitches in, um, <clears throat> uh, more stitches per inch uh, in that yarn than you do in the other one. Okay, the other one's a little bit bulkier. So um, when, when you tend to go down to a peg spacing that's a little closer together, um, it's going to kind of bulk up in between your pegs like it might be a little bulky for here so just keep that in mind because um you you might be able to use the same yarn on all these but um the smaller yarn you go down to if you start with the yarn that's already bigger than um than what your original is it's going to be um it's going to change your sizing any, anyway so like if i was to if i was to change the yarn um to that other one and use the same uh, tool here, then I would need to um, make my own uh, swatch and I probably would cast on even less. So the original pattern actually called for 59 stitches to be cast on and I ended up changing the sizing and I cast it on 53 just to get the 15. So I even I had to change something. Okay. Um, but even if I kept it the original and I wanted something really wide, so like, let's just say you wanted something, uh, maybe even a 4X size, like say you wanted this in a 4X or you wanted longer sleeves, right? Um, I had someone ask about longer sleeves. You could totally cast on 59 inches on this one with the scarfy yarn. And it would, what it does is it makes the shoulders, um, fall off. Let me show you. Let me point because it's going to be a lot easier just pointing instead of just talking. Hold on. 
So right here, oops, sorry. So from here to here is that's the panel width. So if you make it wider, it's just going to drop down lower. Okay, so on my arms, well, it's really hard to see, but it kind of falls. It's kind of falling like where my bicep is, like right here. And so if I wanted it to come down, you know, a little further, then um, I would want to um, maybe take a measurement on myself and see where I want it to fall. And um, yeah, you want to measure along this outside here and then make that width. Does that, is that helpful? Have we, <laughs> have we further confused you? Watch it from the beginning later on, especially if you came in in the middle of it and kind of use this in conjunction with the website information. Be sure and read. I know it's a lot of reading. Be sure and read through an entire pattern first. I always recommend watching the video all the way through. <clears throat> and a little tip for you, if you're on my website, you scroll all the way down, we put the video down at the bottom and you can play it in here, in the player on the website. If you want to, you can always click any video tutorial. You can always click the name of the tutorial up at the top and it will send you to the YouTube channel. And if you are logged in, this will save in your history folder. Okay. And you can make your own playlist and stuff like all your favorite, um, uh, Lumnet patterns, whether they're mine or someone else's, you can make your own playlist. It's really cool. But then you can go back to it later and it also saves in your history. And it also remembers what spot you were at. <laughs> so, um, that way when you start playing it again, it picks up right where you left off, right? Especially if you're in the middle of knitting this thing and you keep having to pause, you're like, where was I? So, um, also in here, let's just for a second, I'm going to click and go into YouTube and I'll show you something else. So if you're used to, um, make sure and pause on here. Hold on. And mark where, there we go. If I go in here and, um, <clears throat> I'm in the YouTube player, right? It says the name of, it. this is, oh, I can't do that in here. <laughs> I'm trying to zoom in. It says the name of um, the video, right? Um, go all the way over here. It used to say like, see more or something like that or description. And it kind of stinks right now because you have to click this little arrow right here. And when you click it, it opens and expands the description and in here, um, now on a desktop or laptop, it works even better. But down at the bottom, I have timestamps to the different things that you might want to see. And you can click. These are clickable, not, not on my iPad, but they're clickable when you um, are on a desktop or laptop. Or you could look at that number and then scrub through. You can go slide through and go, oh, I want to see the um, where we're doing the increases. So I'm going to go all the way down to 11 minutes and 28 seconds and I'm just gonna you know play from there 31 inches. so it'll it'll start at the right spot there the other thing um, I want to tell you is well be sure and subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get notifications when things come out but um, you know obviously I'd love for you to like write your comments in here and all that um, you can add it to a playlist here that's how you add the playlist the other thing is, let's go up here to the little three dots, and you want to click playback speed. And if I'm going way too fast, slow me down. Okay, I sound a little, sound a little uh, unkempt, dr drunkish. Do like go to like 0.75 and slow it down. Or if I'm just in a talking thing, like right now, you're listening to me. You can re re when you replay my broadcast, you could always listen to me on like one and a half or on um, <clears throat> playback speed, let's go to, um, yeah, 1.25 or one and a half. I don't recommend on two times. And we need to start our um, row one. See how I'm going row. faster? Need to cast on. You could go like crazy fast. Let's see if I can go two times, ready? Before we get started, and what this is going to do is it's going to give us an extra stitch here to seam against when I have, this is my left half here and you're working on your right half right now. I just want you to Right? So that's gonna be like way faster. So I just wanted to give you an idea on controls on this um, so that, hopefully is helping you. <laughs> um, that is it on that. Let's see. And then we were in here. Um, yeah. So the website, um, so the website that has the tutorial is here. And then you can also see, this is where I was using those clamps. These little things we were talking about earlier. This is where I was clipping to mark where I was going to be sewing. So anyway, those are the tools that I used. What else was I going to show you? 
Do you guys have any other questions? Um, let me flip the camera. Hello. Oh, turn that off. That's really bright. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, the chipmunk voice. <laughs> Um, Christy says you can even make 20 different categorized lists with hundreds of videos. I know this theoretically, of course. Yeah, you can, um, you know, probably keep the amount of videos in there short, but, um, you know, you could even like categorize your favorite. Um, <clears throat> we're, we're going to be doing some new categories too. Be sure and check out, I have a lot of playlists, so you might want to go and like subscribe to them or go check them out. Um, when you're on the main YouTube channel on my page, um, on youtube.com slash good knit kisses you can go in there and click on playlists and they'll you may see a few and then you just click that see more button and then it'll be like a ton you'll be like whoa i didn't know she had all these <laughs> so that's good uh let's see i'm gonna go back through some of these links um if you need to get this loom if you need to get oops this loom <laughs> um, we should have links on the amazon thing oops i hit the thing Last I looked, I think this one was sold out on the KB Looms Amazon store. You can go to kblooms.com um, if you're able to get in the Amazon store. I would really appreciate it. They don't, you know, I, by the way, I've never been, <laughs> I, all my tutorials that I've ever done for KB Looms or the other loom people, um, like when I've done them as a review, I've received the looms, but I haven't like gotten paid for those and from all the years. And uh, so I thought it would be kind of nice to be able to do the Amazon store. So I'm just being real with you guys. Um, just this past week, just so you know, um, I've got closed captions now on the last 75 tutorial videos that I've done. I spent my own money. I spent like $1,000, seriously, um, on all these videos. And I'm going to try and start. And this Ruana one has closed captioning. So I'm spending my money and I'm hoping that some of it kind of comes back to kind of pay for that so I can spend some more again. So, um, I really want to get all my videos done, but I have like over 500 and I've done like some of my like top 10 videos and captioned them, um, over the years. But, um, and then I've had several people volunteer for some, but it also takes time for me to go back and I have to review them. And I find that it's, I just, it's hard for me to take the time to do that. And you know what's really funny is when I do my own captions and I review my stuff, I find myself watching my, what I'm doing and not reading the captions. <laughs> oh my gosh. The struggle is real. I am distracted by the yarn. Like I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. So we have found out that actually a lot of people who are, um, who are hearing, they're using closed captions. You probably have, I, I look at closed captions cause there's sometimes there's just things I'm like, what did they say? Not really sure what exactly they said. Or maybe like my husband's watching a show. And I'm like, mm, I'm going to turn on closed captions and I can watch this thing in my hand and then, you know, <clears throat> whatever. So, or like watch a, <laughs> watch a, um, uh, cooking tutorial <laughs> or something too. So anyway, um, yeah, if I had support for that, um, it would be super. All right. I'm reading. <clears throat> okay. April says, did I see the KBS Afghan loon on the cover of the book? I need to get one using that, but it's collecting dust. Yeah. That's on the cover of the book. I just, that was a photograph of actually my looms at the time, just a kind of a picking of some of the looms. Um, I laid them on my floor in my house and took a picture. <laughs> that's, that's the cover of this book. So she's talking about, so on this book, by the way, can't find these looms. I don't know where my original Nifty Knitter long looms are. They're gone. I cannot find them. So I think I may have lent them out to somebody and I've forgotten <laughs> I need to like, I need to check out system. Anyway, she's talking about this loom right here. So yeah, anyway, that's just some of my, this is just, just a little sampling of some of my looms, um, that I've got. I keep them in like bins and some of them are hanging and some, most of them aren't. So let's see, I'm gonna go back, see if I have any other questions to answer. Can you use any steamer? Sure, Sandy. Totally. Just be sure if you're using something like acrylic, um, to not put too much, uh, steam on the stitches at one time. You don't want to kill it. So where it just kind of lays there and it's kind of flaccid, like it's not, 
anyway, you don't want to kill the yarn. <laughs> don't use too much steam. Just kind of lightly um, until you get the look you want. Like, do it lightly, and then you can wait for it to cool down, and then do it again. And, um, you know, I kind of, like, kind of tug on it a little bit and give it a little bit of a... Um, I give it a little bit of a tug and then I'll steam it a little bit. It's kind of like when you're, um, you're ironing, you have to lay it out flat on the ironing board, you know? Um, but yeah, just steam it and don't press, don't press. So if you're using a regular iron and you've got it laying on an ironing board, you're going to want to sh shoot it from away. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, here. Here's the box for the steamer. Now, on the box, it said it's a white one. I kind of was like, oh, it's white, but it was black. And when I pre when I looked at it online and bought it, I bought it on Amazon, but I have it in my Amazon store. It's, it's white here, but clearly black. Um, but yeah, this is what it looks like. Garment steamer. Um, says so steam preparation time, 70 seconds. Um, the capacity of the water tank, um, it, it goes pretty fast. Um, yeah, so you don't want to fill it past that max level, um, but the capacity is 180 um, milliliters and then nine minutes of steam duration and then it like runs out of water. Um, but be sure and empty and rinse and empty the um, this so you can increase the life of it. And I would put like, I when it's drying or something, like stick maybe a paper towel or something like that to kind of wick up any extra moisture. That way you can save the inside um, pieces and stuff, like the metal in there from corrosion. So that is the uh, Lemon Tech Garment Steamer. Hi Lori, I see you jumped on. Good morning, Webb. Uh, let's see, just scrubbing through. Hi, Angel. Okay, Kristen, how do I make my blanket bigger on the KB Afghan loom? Making it bigger? I mean, if you're using all the stitches, um, you can just make another panel and then join it and stitch it together. But you can't make it bigger than whatever your yarn and your stitch is going to allow. Now, sometimes depending upon the stitch or the yarn, it'll be wider than the loom you're working on. And sometimes it could be smaller in width than what you're working on. It really just depends on your, your tension and the stitch pattern and the yarn. So, um, I would just get two panels and, um, work them, um, sew them side by side. Once it's kind of intimidating to say, Oh, got to sew panels together. Oh no. Um, there's several different types of um, ways to stitch stuff together. I used to panic about it when I first got started. And, um, you know, if you're careful, um, you can loosely learn how to stitch something together and then kind of pull together a one little section and see if you like it. If you don't like it, pull it out and try a different seam. Like, these are suggestions. You don't have to do any one of them. If you don't like that, then try a different way. So how do you find the book, Sandy? Um, we'll put a link in for the book. Um, you can buy the PDF. Now, if you buy the PDF on um, Ravelry.com, if I ever do an update, you'll get the update. That's the only one that does it like that. So you can buy the actual PDF. If you get it on Kindle, I don't, I'm not really a fan. Um, it's out of my hands if you get a Kindle. I have no control over that. And it's, but the print to, um, um, print on demand from Amazon and Barnes and Noble and books.com and all the other places worldwide. It's up to them. They buy my book at wholesale and then they print it in your area from wherever you bought it from. And then it's shipped to you just to keep the price reduced. So I have no control over those. And then the, all those sites, like they make their own prices on the book. If you buy it in PDF form on Ravelry, um, I, that's my preferred way. Um, that I, I would prefer you buy the book that way or, um, yeah, that's a great way to do it. <laughs> if you do PDF, um, you can also get it on my Etsy store as well. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Thank you for the paperback link, Joanne. Hey, Christy, I see you jumped on. Hey, Cassie and Tammy. Hi, good morning. Oh, my ears are popping. Um, Cassie, am I going to put this video on the YouTube channel? Um, yeah, Joanne, we should probably pop this on the, the channel later on today or we'll put it on tomorrow or something. Um, we have a video coming out later today. Um, so by the way, I'm now releasing videos, um, on Friday, Sunday, and Monday. 
at 2 uh, p.m. Central Standard Time. If you click subscribe on the YouTube channel and click that bell icon for notifications, you'll get it. But if you're like, I want to get it when it's hot, <laughs> then go at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time and look at the channel and see it pop up. So those those videos will be popping up at that time. So there'll be another video coming out today at two o'clock. Now, when I do replays that we push um, onto YouTube, it doesn't. It's not always on that same schedule. So the only way you'll know is when if you just go check my channel or to subscribe and get and tell it to get notifications. That's the best way to do it. <clears throat> yes, you can knit the pattern without the loom, Kira. Um, there's a needle pattern on the um, on the website for Lion Brand. And you can do that. Um, I would ask if you are one of my one of my awesome good kissers out there, fans. Uh, Joanne's, I'm not Joanne's. Um, I'm sorry. Lion Brand will have the video up on their channel uh, this coming Friday. If y'all will give them some love and go watch it over there for me, um, that would be awesome. Let them know that we are happy about them having luminate patterns. Be sure and watch it and give them um, uh, give them some love. Write a comment on their channel. I'm going to ask you to do that for me if you could. Please, on Friday when they release it, go and pop over and say thank you for the luminant video. We're excited because that would help everybody <laughs> that would tell them that you want these videos okay and it would tell them that you like me which is great <laughs> but i i want them to know that you want low knitting videos <laughs> and then yes i would love to be able to work with them again so it would be fantastic um but they need to know um that that people like these and need them okay <laughs> so but they're having it on their channel just so that their people you know, who normally see their stuff can see it so i'm just being completely transparent with you if you could like set an alarm i don't know what time it'll go so if you even want to check it on saturday or something but it's supposed to release like next uh later this week so um Tracy, you're hard of hearing, so you close caption. Okay, good. And I'm sorry I don't have my um, Facebook one. And boy, I had somebody um, solicit me, like send me a message saying that they could caption my live Facebooks. And ah, it is so expensive. I can't afford that, y'all. I mean, I don't... I don't make that much money. I mean, I make some, but I mean, I'm supporting my family first. <laughs> I really want to caption this. I wish that there was a tool that was just free. Like I wish that Facebook did an automatic uh, captions. Like it's automated. Even if it was wrong, it would be better than nothing. And uh, I understand because my sister-in-law, she has a cochlear. She's, she's, um, well, she's deaf. She's like 98 or 99% deaf. I don't think Luis is on here right now, but, um, that's why sometimes I'm, I'm using the forward facing camera just in case anyone's lip reading. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, I've started especially captioning the ones that are the tutorials. Now, the only ones that I did not caption from the fall, I went all the way back to August. So from all of February and then this last video on, that was on Friday from February all the way to August I've captioned all of those tutorials the ones that I did not do are the live videos and like some of the pom-pom tutorial things um, I think that's it yeah so um, and then the loom the live loom knit stitch along um, those aren't captioned because um, they're really long and anyway so if anybody wants to sponsor um, if you want to sponsor a video, let me know. That would be awesome and amazing, and I can earmark that for it. But, I mean, I'm not asking you guys to do that. But if you guys are interested in a Super Chat for that reason, Super Chat on YouTube um, allows me... I could do some fundraising for captions, but the last time I did it, nobody contributed. I was really disappointed for the for that community because um, that's exclusively what I was going to use that for. So... Anyway, thanks for the link for Kira. That's that link for the needle pattern. Hey, Jeanette, I see you jumping on. Allison, what if you do not have an iron or steamer, no iron setting or washer or dryer? You can wet block. I have a video on how to wet block. And um, it just takes a little longer, but it's worth the patience. Um, it also will set your panel nice and um, even, okay? Uh, I need to uh, I need to finish blocking out the bottom of this one because it's a little stretched out 
from from here. If you saw, I showed a picture of my friend Cindy, and she's kind of turning around in the back. It's a little well. Part of it is the way it's laying on her, just because I just had her throw it on and put it on. But um, the bottom part of it, I need to block it out. So what you do is you um, you get it wet. You um, I've got a video on how to do it, but you basically are um, squeezing out. Where's my sample? I lost my sample. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, anyway, you get it you get it wet, you're washing it. You're kind of gently squeezing it out into and like with a towel and getting a lot of the moisture out and leaving it like moist. It's damp. And then you block it out with these T-pins. You know, they're shaped like a little T and they're rust proof. And then you um put it on one of those blocking boards or like I use like kids letter blocks like I have those from when my kids were little and instead of throwing them out I kept them and used them for blocking boards and you're just pinning this into place so that it becomes the shape that you need it you don't like over stretch it but you can stretch something to lengthen a little bit but you want to get it nice and even and uh, and then um, let it dry and it could be that you've got to let it dry overnight and um, you know yeah, sometimes you have to kind of keep and kind of reblock it too, depending upon um, uh, how uh, how difficult it was. I just found that this this yarn, I I like steaming it better. Alicia says my KK looms. Are, oh, <laughs> oh, that's cool. There you got them hanging in your on command strips. Get the Ravelry PDF. Christy says from there you can download, uh, then send to your Kindle format. Yeah, do you like that format, Christy? Hey, Linda, see you jumping on. You're welcome, Kara. Um, I'm saying you're welcome for Joanne. <laughs> uh, yes, Christy, it will be on the Lime Brand YouTube channel. I would love to be able to do more videos for them. This is the first one for this year. I haven't done uh, any videos for them in a while. I'd like to do some more. And uh, I'd love to do some more Lumnit conversions for you guys. Uh, we got your back, Kasid says. Thank you so much. Love loom knitting, Rosie says. Thank you. Um, how much is it to sponsor a video for you? Um, if someone's interested in having me do a video, um, I usually like to talk about that um, kind of offline. So, like, if they want to email me. Um, so, if you have something that you want me to do, let me know and I can work with you. I just work directly with the brands. Um, I don't publish uh, that. Um because I'm, I work on what will work for them. And I don't, of course, I don't accept anything unless I think you guys are going to like it. Um, I don't want to push stuff on you. Um, I only want to do what I love and what I think that you guys would love. So, um, that's really the thing. <laughs> the key is, is, is it going to work for what we're doing here? Right. It would not make sense for me to just take any and all offers that are given to me. Right. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I have like this company that keeps asking me to do like this, this thing on beanbag chairs. Um, I have another one that's doing, um, what is it they keep sending me? They said, just send me all this stuff. And I'm like, like makeup and like, I'm like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> like that's not, you guys don't know me anyway. Okay. Alicia says I used a thick yoga mat for walking. Oh yeah. I forgot. Yeah. People have the thick yoga mats. That works really well. Thank you for that link. Um, we have the link for the how to wet block on good knit kisses. So that's a good one. Uh, let's see. What else do we want to say? Does anybody have any other questions? I think I'm going to head on out here. It's been an hour now. Wow. That flew by. Oh my goodness. Well, you guys have been a great audience. <laughs> I have been, um, sorry, man, I've got a lot of notifications popping up. Oh my gosh. Robin, are you writing to me separately? <laughs> I think Robin's writing me on Instagram. I'm like, stop. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, gosh. Sorry. It, like, blocks it, and I can't see all my controls. Anyway, I hope you guys are, um, are going to try that. Please, if you make the Ruana Free Spirit Topper, I would love to see a picture on the Good Knit Kisses page. If you put that on there, tag me. Let me know. I will share that. Um, I really want to show off all these toppers. It would be so fun to see that and see what you guys chose. Be sure and let me know what loom you used. And if you used a different yarn, let us know. If you want to say how many you cast on, all the information that you add in there is only going to help another person. So if you want to help another person, let us know. If you made a swatch and you want to share your calculations 
and what you think your cast on is going to be, and you're like at the beginning stages, do it. You could even, um, we need to put this on Ravelry if we haven't done already, but you could even go on Ravelry and make this a project there and start like kind of a project thing and, um, and put all your information in there. That is only going to help other people too. And you in the future, if you want to make it again, by the way, this would make a great mother's day present, wouldn't it? And you have plenty of time. Yes, you have plenty of time. So if you get on it now, <laughs> you can start working on it. And I promise they're not going to know what you're doing because, because it's made in these two panels it, and they look the same. Nobody's going to know what it is until you put it on and you're like, oh, that's what you were making and you made it for me? Like, wow. <laughs> and first of all, um, I love mine so much. I'm not giving it to my mom. I need to make a second one for her. <laughs> She loved it, by the way. <laughs> so, oh, how many skeins, Christy asked. In this, in the um, scarfy yarn, it took four. Now, technically, it didn't use all four. Each panel took about one and a half. Okay. Now, depending upon your starting point, and I show you where to start so that it starts on the color, depending upon your starting point, you may have a lot of extra yarn in the beginning that you cut off just to get to that. So I would suggest when you're buying your balls, if you're not buying online, when you're buying your balls, try and get it to where the color, um, you have a little bit of the gray color first, um, that's on the front end of the roll on the outside and then that's where you cut it and then start pulling the new color don't do it where it's like a ton of gray and then that next color um on the outside i suggest pulling it from the outside just because of the nature of this yarn it worked better that way and then just put it in a bowl and then pull from it that way don't pull from the inside um so four balls to get the coloring i had someone ask about karen cakes and it was earlier in the broadcast and i completely forgot to address it and i think you might have been the same person who has asked me online. I don't know the answer. Um, I, I don't I don't know what it will look like. Um, I don't know the answer on how many you need to cast on because I haven't done the swatch. So you're going to need to make a swatch with the Karen cake um, in the um, on the loom that you want to use. That's all you know. And and just and just where is my sample? Okay, you're only going to use your knit stitch. So the only the U wrap stitch now. If you're like, I want to use an E-Rep, that's what I want to use, Kristen, I'm using an E-Rep, that's fine. It's not going to look the same. It. See how this, see how this is nice and smooth? Well, I have a hickey in this thing, but that's because I did something. But this right here, it's nice and smooth. If I do a U-Rep stitch, okay, so these V's are all lining up, right? They're like nice and flat, smooth. If I do an E-Rep what it does is it twists that stitch it t on top of each other. And so it becomes like this little, oh, my nails are really bad. Um, it twists it and one is on top of the other and it makes an outward bump. So it doesn't lay as smooth as this. By the way, can y'all see the halo of this yarn? You can see the little fuzzy on it. It feels really good. So yeah, so it's got this really pretty look to it. And an E-wrap is going to be stretchier. So um, if you use the E-wrap on this loom it may appear bulkier and stretchier wider and have more holes now if you use the e-wrap on this one it won't have as many holes if you're using the same yarn but it's still going to have that bump on it so the smoothness is not going to appear as nicely um robin says i agree do not pull from the inside of line brand scarfy yarn much better from the outside. Yeah, you'll have a much better experience. Um, it can catch, it can snag. If you're having to undo stitches, um, it's harder. <laughs> so, um, what else can I tell you? Uh, let's see. You're meeting your new dog, Kristen. Oh, are you adopting a dog? You almost missed, it, missed me. Well, I hope you have fun with your new dog. Uh, let's see. Allison, did anyone else get a chance to watch Kristen and her shopping spree? Michael's in the big balls. <laughs> if you didn't catch that last year, I freaked out with the Michael's big balls. So you have to catch that. I think there's Michael's big balls again. Um, the, the care, I mean the, um, it's blanket yarn big and, um, from, and they're only at Michael's. And I think they're like a, a win it kind of thing. Like, so like when you pull from the middle of the skein, you can like win stuff. So yeah, <laughs> and but you if you watch that one, you got to watch the video after, which is the next day. And I kind of had like my little yarn hangover. I had like buyer's remorse. Well, I had checkout remorse. I didn't have buyer's remorse. 
<laughs> so, um, yeah, Christy, um, I don't know if you'll have enough. Um, be sure and check even on a knockoff, like make sure the yardage, um, because it could be packaged slightly different. It may not have as much yardage in it. So be sure and check. And there are some things like, um, sometimes the weight changes a little bit and the, or the yardage will change. Like it might be like a little bit bulkier weight, a little bit lighter weight. Um, and the yardage has been off. So I've noticed that on some knockoff kind of things, but I mean, I would recommend the Lion Brand one, but if that's what you have, make it. Uh, and then what is U wrap? A U wrap stitch. I addressed that in the video. So instead of wrapping around the peg, oh my gosh, I don't even have a yarn. Right, here's some yarn. So instead of e-wrapping like this, okay, like that's an e-wrap, right? Instead of e-wrapping, you go around the front of the peg. Well, here, let's just get a few on here first. All right, so then you just go around the front of the peg and go to the back and then lift up and over. So it makes a U um, around it. Um, you can also do the true knit stitch, which is like a, a some people call a reverse purl. You can do that. It takes a while. If you have a kiss loom, oh my goodness, you're going to love this. You know, stocking net on the kiss loom and it's super consistent. Um, it's just really awesome. So <laughs> try that. Um, it's slightly thinner. You do know that. Okay, cool. Um, Robin says, and because it's a roving style, the scarfy tends to stick to itself, but it does come out beautifully. Yeah, because it's roving style, but also because it's got wool in there and it's, um, and it's, um, and it's roving wool, just so you know, under a microscope, <laughs> um, the, uh, or even just a really big magnifying glass, um, yarn looks like this. If it's like man-made, Okay unless they've made it specifically, it's just like a tube, right? It's tubular, tubular shaped. And then you, uh, the wool has like these little hairs. So you'll have these little hairs sticking out of it. Okay. And then those grab onto the other hairs and then they kind of just lock in place. That's why if you're trying to undo some stitches, sometimes you might be like, oh, I need my loom pick. I'm looking for my loom pick. I have lost everything. <laughs> There's a different loom pick. Sometimes I might like go like this and trying to kind of get the little hairs unlocked if I had to undo a stitch or something and it's like grabbing too much. That's really what's happening. So yeah. Robin says I use scarfy yarn and five eighths gauge loom. Um, awesome. Cool. Okay. So do the Rwanda this week. Do it. Just do a sample and see what size you're going to make. I would love to see you guys starting, even if you're just posting like just a little start in the Good Knit Kisses group or on the main page. It would help someone else too. So if you have time to just make a little swatch, just a swatch, and know what it is, and you can get your yarn and set it aside, um, that would be awesome. But we do have videos coming up. Um, you guys are going <laughs> to... Oh, I don't even want to tell you. Joanne, I, don't, I shouldn't tell him yet, should I? We're working on something. Joanne and I are working on something. And over the next two weeks, um, they'll kind of be in, um, in, in harmony with one another, the video that comes out. Have you guys been enjoying those calculators coming out? Uh, so we'll be having another calculator coming out uh, that's that people ask questions on all the time. And I've had to kind of ignore the answers because honestly, I don't know until I get this thing all worked out. Um, I should say Joanne gets this thing all worked out. <laughs> so uh, she and I are working together. And then I'm making samples for the tutorial that will be next week. So we'll have the... Um, the calculator come out, I'll have a video on it. And then while I'm gone on vacation, while I'm away from doing all the social media stuff, it will still release. So even though you won't see me on a live tutorial, we'll still have a tutorial come out. So we still have videos Friday, Sunday, Monday, 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. So I hope to see you. Tell them. Okay. You guys, it's a 10 stitch and it's an easier 10 stitch and you're going to flip. Yeah, it's like way easier. And I'm going to do an actual 10 stitch. Yeah. So I've had the five stitch that I showed you guys how to do on the zippy loom and it's like extra big, but I'm making the 10 stitch. Yes, I'm making a video on it and it's super easy. 
and it looks really nice. <laughs> and um, Allison, I don't know the answer to that question. Sorry. So if you guys are excited about it, um, please give me some love. Yeah, easier 10 stitch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you don't need the 11th stitch. You don't even need to do wraps. Well, you do, but they're easier. Yeah. Now, Kasid, Joanne is the best, and she convinced me. She convinced me. Do y'all want to see this teaser? I have a bag on the floor here. I can get it out. Do you want to see my sample? You guys are like my loyal peeps who are like still sticking around. It's been over an hour, and you're still here. I love you. Thank you for sticking it out to the end. <laughs> I'm going to give you some love and show you some stuff. Hold on. I'm reaching in my bag of tricks and I'm pulling it out. Looky what we had here. Mm -hmm, I'm pulling it out. All right. Sorry, I'm being so goofy. Okay. All right. <laughs> Look at these corners. Don't they look awesome? Oh, there's there's not a thing here showing me corners. I don't have to put a stitch marker in. Look at these corners, y'all. They're so good, right? Here's the back. This is the back, right? I haven't, haven't even, you know. And um, we're working out a thing to know whatever loom you work on, whatever yarn you work on, how, how, yeah, yeah. So I want to know all the things and I want to know how much yarn I need and how big is it going to be and all that stuff. So we're trying to answer all those questions for you. We're working on those things. This is what I'm working on right now is using Bernat Softy Chunky. It's real thick. It's a super bulky weight. And then I'm also working on, hang on. Oh my gosh, I have a mess in this bag. I went out with my husband last night and I threw all my stuff. I had to frog because I wasn't paying attention. Hold on. Shut the front door. Okay. <clears throat> this feels really good. This right here. Look at this. And this beautiful. So this is this is another yarn. Same loom. Same loom. Look at that corner. Isn't that gorgeous? The corners look great. The, um, I mean, like, seriously, look at the back of that. This yarn, it looked even better. So it's the same. I'm doing this one on the same loom. Okay. So these were done on the same loom. And um, I'm sorry, this is the front. This is the right side. And then this is the wrong side. Okay. Which it still looks fantastic. Um, but yeah, yeah, so that's, that's this one. This is, um, Burnett Beyond. Burnett Beyond. And then I'm also going to make a, no, this is a Nifty Knitter Loom, Alicia. This is a 5 8 Nifty Knitter Loom. You can also get it from, um, Cindy Wood. I don't have my Cindy Wood one in front of me, but you can get it, uh, an equivalent from Cindy Wood. Um, Yeah. I'm also going to um, see what it looks like using the scarfy yarn, like some of my remnants from Scarfy, so I can see what the, what it looks like on here. And you can use any loom, um, and you want to use appropriate yarn. So we're going to work on all the things, and then we'll have a tutorial for it. Will be next week, but the calculators are going to come out this week, so you can get ready for the next week. Does that sound cool? Y'all give me some love if you're excited. <laughs> Kasid says paying attention to your husband is important. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yes, Christy, I understand. <laughs> Alicia, you and Joanne are the best. Yeah, Joanne rocks. She just really does. And she's kicked the 11 stitch to the curb. <laughs> Casita's jumping down excited. <laughs> so is Allison. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jeanette, and you like the corners? Sweet. Oh, man. Okay, well, I'm so glad you guys stayed around with me. Oh, man, there's a lot of people that still stayed around. So 
awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, I will see you um, later on on YouTube today with another little technique tutorial. And then um, we'll try and get this video back up on YouTube, but you can still watch it on Facebook. And uh, we'll see you Friday for the calculator and uh, all that stuff. So you guys have a great day and happy knitting and crochet. Bye, everyone. <laughs>